So just to kind of set the context for what I'm going to cover is go into, you know, and deep touched on a few topics around this, like um, even, you know, resource quotas, looking at pod security policies. Um, but I think that, you know, there, you know, what I want to do is go one level deeper, especially if you're creating charts or using charts in production, uh, which are, you know, authored by third party vendors, you want to do some deeper scanning and inspections, right? So first off, if you think about security, and it's interesting because we, you know, tend to sort of um, think about, you know, these more complex or let's say uh, deep sort of schemes that people may be coming uh, up with to, to, you know, for hacks or for, um, you know, security vulnerabilities, things like that. But in most cases, configuration and misconfiguration happens to be the, the most common cause of securities, right? And uh, security vulnerabilities. And if you think about it, you know, I mean, it, it, it makes sense, right? Because um, if somebody's, you know, scanning for um, any, any sort of vulnerable sites, looking at things, they don't have time. They're not going to, you know, have the patience to come up with some complex um, scheme in, in order to hack in or break in into a system. They're looking for common misconfigurations, uh, things, very simple things to do, which are not often done. Um, and they're going to exploit those. So this is something that uh, you know has happened with Kubernetes, uh, and will continue to happen, right? And we've seen several examples of this in cloud-based systems where it's extremely simple misconfigurations that cause the most severe security problems, right? Now thinking about this in Kubernetes, I mean Kubernetes, of course, takes configuration to the next level, right? And this is what we love about Kubernetes. So here's a simple chart, right, which is for a Nginx controller, and it, it translates to about 1,000 lines of YAML. And there's a lot of, you know, uh, I mean, it's not, no, no particular piece here is complex by itself, but there's just a lot to go through. And there's a lot of YAML and a lot of definitions uh, which are, you know, sort of included in this. And of course, this is what makes Kubernetes so powerful, the declarative configuration management, the fact that it's so flexible that you can configure any aspect of the system, but yet that perhaps is, is, is you know, what also leads to the complexity uh, in Kubernetes, right? There's a daunting amount of things to configure, to manage, uh, to be able to deploy and, and use any workload. So certainly, you know, there needs to be a better solution. And interestingly, Kubernetes also gives us some of these solutions, right? So first off, you know, Helm itself, a fantastic solution from the com community where uh, you can take some of these, you know, configurations or package a lot of these config common configurations like DeepMent through, uh, include them in, in a bundle. So now you have one, you know, sort of, you know, package to manage uh, instead of these thousands of lines of YAML with different configuration objects that you need to think through. But really, how do you know what you're getting, right? So how do you, you know, how do you know that the authors of the chart have really gone through and taken care of the best practices and the ever evolving set of best practices, we should say, in the Kubernetes community, right? So there's uh, things like, for example, one of the things I'll talk about is also the evolution of pod security policies and where that's headed. Um, so just first off, quick introduction to myself. Like I mentioned at the top of the hour, I, I'm Jim Baguadia. I'm a co-founder and the CEO at Nirmata. And you know, I work with. Uh, I've been working with Kubernetes for the past four, four or so years. And you know, lately I've been contributing most in the policy working group, also the multi-tenancy working group. Uh, so certainly, you know, reach out on those communities. There's a lot of interesting things going on in the community as we are all working to you know evolve Kubernetes to the next level, right? Make it easier to use, easier to manage uh, at scale, and also fit into more enterprise use cases. So thinking about security and you know, just a very, very kind of, you know, high level rough view of Kubernetes, um, or I guess you could apply this to any, any platform as a service type of technology. So you have, um, if you think about a DevOps pipeline, you want to do a certain level of security outside your running environments, right? So these are things like what Chart Center enables with uh, the pretty awesome integration with, you know, X-Ray and other tools where you can easily see for any chart what the vulnerabilities are, what uh, happens. So image scanning, 
most folks in the community and most customers that we work with, image scanning is something that everybody understands that must be done, uh, must be part of their CI, CD and uh, DevOps process. The next step is before you bring something into your cluster, into your domain, you wanna make sure that you, know, uh, you have the right permissions, like things like RBAC, uh, et cetera. And that again is a well understood um, you know, thing. And then more and more, you know, sort of uh, folks are realizing that also within the cluster, you need to uh, look for, you know, have some runtime security tools, whether it's tools like, you know, Aqua security or Sysdix, Falco or other projects, which are constantly looking for, you know, interesting events and occurrences inside of the cluster. But along with that, you know, what I want to kind of emphasize is again, going back to the premise that configuration is the number one source of security problems or misconfigurations, I should say. Um, you need to now layer in configuration validation, um, configuration enforcement and scanning for each one of these phases, right? So what's important is uh, because of this, again, the declarative uh, configuration management in Kubernetes, the daunting amount of configuration and the complexity of it, more and more, you know, the idea is that you want to automate this and just really make this part of your entire tool chain rather than this being an afterthought, right? And as Deep mentioned, like, you know, uh, tools like Nirmata and others, what we do beyond, you know, just um, uh, as we're deploying and managing environments and clusters at scale is we provide these type of, um, you know, features out of the box to make this easy. And what I'll show is, you know, how we're uh, doing that through one of our open source projects, Kiverno, which is a policy engine. So let me step back and talk a little bit about PSPs and pod security policies, because it's uh, interesting, again, as Kubernetes evolves and it, it is a fast moving project. So there's lots of ideas and great ideas that come in. Um, and not every one of them makes it to GA, right? So uh, with PSPs, they're currently, uh, within the community, the discussions and where things are, PSPs are currently, I believe, a beta feature, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and there's no plans to move them further into GA, right? Um, or they might actually be an alpha feature. I'm not sure which one of those, but... Uh, and, and the reasoning why, why PSPs are not being, you know, um, moved to sort of a GA state or a stable state is because the real world experience has been, you know, so first off, PSPs tie in into RBAC and auth control, and they're fairly complex to configure and manage at scale, and you end up with several, you know, different levels of policies for different types of pods, and you, somebody has to manage all of that, which is fairly complex. Um, the other aspect of PSPs, and perhaps this is, you know, the, the main uh, issue, is if you have an existing cluster and existing workloads, there really is no proper way to roll out PSPs. It's like all or nothing, right? So, and, and you know, if you if you enable them, your Im immediately your workloads which are non-compliant are going to break, right? So clearly, that's not a good thing that you want to do with your clusters or um, in the feedback and the discussions. And these are discussions in like SIG uh, security and other, um, you know, uh, SIG auth and other groups within the CNCF um, has been that this is you know. Practically speaking, it's not very usable, right? So one of the replacements being discussed is to standardize pod security profiles. And I'll just quickly show what these look like. I'll just pull up a link. There is a Google Doc out there and feel free to reach out You know, if you want the link, it will be in the presentation. But this discusses the different types of profiles and it's a very, you know, pretty, pretty good proposal where the idea is that you have privileged baseline and restricted types of workloads, and then you're looking at you know, compliance to that profile, right? So, so then the problem becomes is like, how are you now checking for compliance to that profile? And how do you, you know, do that in, in the various phases of your life cycle? And that's where there's you know, a growing um, you know, sort of set of policy engines, which are very capable, which are able to do this you know, across different phases. And I'm gonna focus on Kiverno. OPA Gatekeeper is perhaps the better known policy engine, but there are some limitations with that, which is why we designed and built Kiverno, um, which is a more Kubernetes native policy engine and can manage you know, uh, these requirements 
across all three phases uh, that we talked about. So just briefly, uh, a couple of quick slides on, you know, to set the context on what Kiverno is. So Kiverno works as an admission controller. And what that will let you do is basically with every API request, there's an admission review request that comes in from the API server to your registered uh, admission controllers. And admission controllers can be validating or mutating. So in this case, Kiverno has policies and you know features to either validate, mutate, generate, configurations dynamically on the fly. And then Kimono will send back a response uh, to the admission server based on your policies. All of this is cached in memory for fast access. It is very much optimized for Kubernetes. So it's not, not a general purpose policy engine, but it's a Kubernetes native policy engine. Policies are very simple resources and I'll show what it takes to manage through that. And the structure of a policy is very straightforward too. So you have a policy with several rules. Rules can you know, be matched and excluded um, based on the resource filters. So based on your admission review request, and then you can mutate, validate, generate different configurations, right? So really that's the basics of Kiverno. And you know, rather than spend more time kind of looking at this um, in, uh, in PowerPoint, what I wanna do is just show you how this works in action, right? And what we're gonna do for that is, you know, we're gonna use the Kiverno CLI for CI CD scanning. We're gonna use the admission controller uh, to do, you know, uh, to block uh, certain, you know, requests. And then we're gonna use uh, the scanner uh, mode, which will also pick up violations and existing workloads. Say your admission controller was down, somebody did something, you also want to do background scanning, right? So admission control is not enough. So this is how Kiverno covers all three phases that we would uh, be interested in. So let me switch to my terminal. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start out by installing Kiverno, right? And we, this is uh, pretty straightforward. So if you go to the Kiverno website itself, um, over here, you know, there's a one line sort of command. There's a Helm chart also, if you prefer using that. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, for this demo, I'll just use this one line command to basically install cluster. So here I have, if I do kubectl get namespace, I have my, you know, this is on my Windows laptop. So I have um, Docker for Windows running, that's running Kubernetes. And I'm just gonna install Kiverno through this one line command. So I, it downloads a bunch of things It it brings up, you know, um, uh, so we'll see if we do kubectl get namespace, uh, we should see now a Kiverno namespace. If we do minus N uh, Kiverno, and we'll look at the workloads. So there's, you know, there's a pod running and that's really all it takes to install Kiverno, right? But now at this point, if I do, you know, kubectl get uh, cpol, which is cluster policies or a short abbreviation for cluster policies, um, I don't have, you know, any, um, you know, any policies installed right now, right? So at this point in my, you know, in my workspace, um, because there's no cluster policies, you know, it's saying that there's nothing, nothing found. So what I'm going to do is in the, on the Kiverno website, you can find a number of different best practice policies. And I'm gonna install those. And then we're gonna try and install some charts with those and see what happens. And the, you know, the ones that I'm gonna install, I'll show you how to find them if you go to the Kiverno website. You can see there's about 17 different best practice policies, everything and which cover a lot of what you know, PSPs do, but they go a lot further also, right? And these are things you can customize. So if you want to you know, even have very fine grained granular policies, that's possible to do. So I have a folder downloaded with the, you know, for all of these. And the only change I made to these policies by default, when you look at these policies on the Kiverno website, the, all of these policies are in audit mode. But what the change I made, and this is if I show you the same policy that I have locally, I have changed this to enforce mode, right? So what this means is now when these policies are applied, um, Kiverno will enforce these policies as admission control which is the first test I wanna show. So I'll go ahead and let's apply these policies.
And once they're applied, what I will do is let's let's go to chart center and let's pick a Helm chart, right? So I think um, Deep talk about Gitia as a chart. So if you look at this, you know, in Helm Center, what we see um, is a lot of information, including this awesome security tab. We see the vulnerabilities, so this is fantastic, right? It shows us a lot of uh, good stuff um, and helpful information directly about what we might want to improve in this chart before we run it in production. But all I want to do is I want to try and install this, and if everything works as expected, what should happen is we get some, you know, some feedback from Kiverno uh, on whether this chart can be installed or not in the cluster. So the the you know the YAMLs were downloaded, and now that was sent to the API server the, through the admission controllers. And what we see is Kiverno, as a validating webhook, denied that request. And it said, you know, hey, there's a few things in this chart which you probably want to look at, right? With and improve on, right? So there's the one thing, of course, um, and sometimes there are good reasons why some of the chart authors prefer or use these. Like for example, if you in install the Nginx ingress, by default, the Nginx ingress also has privilege escalation set to true. Now this might be surprising. It's like, why do I need that for my ingress controller? The reason is, and there's a you know there's a Git ticket on this which describes why. Um, it's because by default the TCP mode and UDP mode are supported, and for those you need some escalated privileges uh, for the lower ports on your on your system. So because of that, the authors decided to you know allow that by default. But this is good information to know before you uh, install that ingress. And of course, if you are not using TCP and UDP, like about 80% of the use cases for Nginx uh, as an ingress would be HTTP, so or perhaps even more. So in that case, you can turn that off and, and you can safely turn that off without impacting any functionality. So, but just looking at some of the you know, errors that we saw over here, what's interesting is, you know, the first off, there's privilege escalation in one of the resources which is what this is pointing out and it's telling us which you know container with security context it's also there's you know um you know run as root uh, also is being flagged and then of course like things like the root file system etc uh, for some of these so these type of issues are what you want to easily be able to detect and also now it's like, okay, if you find this, what do you do and how do you decide whether you want to proceed with that? So that's something that you want to evaluate. But one thing I also want to show is if I want to go back and let's say I change all of these, you know, from enforce, I want to flip them back to audit mode. What will happen is I can replace, uh, change all of these policies to audit mode and let's go ahead and reapply those um, because these are Kubernetes resources. I'm just using kubectl to manage my policies, right? And in this case, what should happen is we'll try and run that chart again. And this time, Kiverno will not, you know, not flag these um, or not block uh, during admission control. But what you'll see, it'll take a few minutes for Kiverno to do a full scan. Um, Oh, it's saying it, uh, yeah, let's put this in a namespace or actually let's just say um, list, whoops. And we can uninstall this. Oops. So I'll uninstall this previous chart and we'll try that again, right? And the expectation is this time, if we, when we run, um, we should be able to install this chart uh, with no issues, but then Kiverno should produce a background scan and a policy report uh, to be able to, you know, for administrators to see things that they might want to improve. So the idea is on your dev test clusters or even in select namespaces on the same cluster, you can enable the audit mode, but then you can enforce for certain workloads uh, for certain things where you're very strict about 
what type of configuration to allow and not, right? So as you see now, this, this is installed, it's running, it's giving us a message for how to use Gitia. So all good in terms of what we wanna do over here. The last thing I wanna show is of course, there's a Helm template command, right? And I talked about you know the, the other uh, place where you want to try and validate your best practices is not just during you know during uh, admission control, but you want to do this as early as possible. So how would you do that with Kimerno? And for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, you know a Kimerno CLI. So we're going to use this command where I'm going to apply all of the best practice policies, but I want to apply it to I previously downloaded and use Helm template to expand out the uh, you know the that same chart um, into a YAML file, right? So this is a pl pretty large um, YAML file, but what we can do is uh, actually, so yeah, I'll paste that and then I'll say minus R for the resource. And I'm gonna do ctemp and then it's, this is the YAML file where I saved the output from Helm template. So if I run this, what I should see is a lot of different output and I actually see now like there's Kiverno mutate policies, which uh, this is an interesting one I wanna highlight, uh, which often catches folks by surprise, right? So if I go back up here, uh, one of the things it said is it's added the safe to evict label onto a deployment. Now, one thing which uh, in Kubernetes, of course you have autoscalers, no to autoscalers, which can scale up or scale down your cluster. And something that's not often known is if your pod uses things like hoster or empty dir in the volumes, what happens is the autoscaler cannot evict that pod. So sure enough, this one is using empty dir. And because of, you know, so it cannot evict the pod if you're trying to drain or cord in the node, if you're trying to scale down. So to, to help the autoscaler, what you need to do is you need to add an annotation, which is what Kiverno did automatically for us over here. Uh, which said it it added this you know safe to evict uh, annotation for the cluster autoscaler because hoster was set, right? So this is one of the best practices that you should follow. Now it's not necessarily security related, but it's you know just lessons learned from operating Kubernetes clusters and something that you want to uh, make sure you have for some of these charts and things which may be using empty dir, which may be using hoster. Now, you know, host or may not be, may be something you just want to completely block because if a pod can, or a workload can access hoster, potentially they could, you know, leverage that for other exploits uh, because they can now get to the host. Uh, so, uh, but empty dir is a safe construct, but even then, you know, that could prevent your uh, scaling down of nodes, right? So it's something that you want to kind of see so that's the last thing I wanted to show and how you could, this can be done just through a command line. Uh, there's a kubectl plugin, which does this through for Kiverno. And there's a lot of other, you know, kind of some of these of course don't apply because you can easily give a namespace, but others which you may want to kind of verify and use in your uh, particular um, deployment itself. So with that, you know, let me go back to the PowerPoint and quickly wrap up. I know we're at the top of the hour. So, what we looked at is how to use Kiverno for configuration, a deeper look into a chart and really figuring out configuration issues, best practices we may wanna follow. And um, Kiverno can be used across the, your entire pipeline. So everything at the CI CD to admission controls to runtime scans. Um, so the, you know, the chart that we installed, if I go back and if I just look at also runtime, so if I do kubectl, and if I do get policy violations, what I should see is a number of different policy violations generated for these charts, right? So that's uh, that's how Kiverno handles that. Nirmata, the solution that we build, it's a you know multi-cluster, multi-cloud Kubernetes manager, which uh, can also you know bundles in and makes Kiverno super easy to use across multiple clusters. And both of these are of course free to try out. So definitely check out Kiverno at the GitHub project. Um, and also for Nirmata, you can go to try it out nirmata.io. And certainly for any other questions or follow-ups, feel free to contact me um, either through email or on Twitter um, or on LinkedIn. So with that, um, 
let's check if there's any questions and that we can Jim, there are some questions on uh, youtube i'll just uh, repeat them just uh, for your uh, reference and you can answer okay. those the um, first question is, is there a GUI to monitor policy deployment and matrices? Yes, so that is exactly what Nirmata does. And I'll just quickly show what that dashboard looks like. So in Nirmata, if you kind of look at uh, different workload policies installed on one of my clusters, this is an example of that. And you can here drill down and see like where the violations are and how you want to kind of assess and process those. Okay, perfect. So another question is, will Kiverno default policies help Kubernetes clusters meet CIS benchmarks? Some of them, right? So some configuration best practices, yes, uh, it will help, but Kubernetes benchmarks, CIS benchmarks also configure or look at things like which API server flags to enable, which how your nodes should be configured, those Kiverno will not be able to handle because Kiverno operates inside the cluster. So anything inside the cluster can be scanned. If you're looking for a tool you know, for, uh, to do the Kubernetes benchmark, Kubebench is probably the, one of the best tools for that. Uh, and there is some work going on in the policy working group to converge on the reporting format from Kiverno and Kubebench and produce common policy reports, which can be consumed upstream. Great. So I know we are over time. But there's one last question. Uh, I think this is again related to Kiverno. Uh, so it says, can we force evict without any callbacks? And this might be related to uh, evicting pods from nodes, but I'm not sure from how this yeah, not, fits not in with sure. Kiverno. Oh, so without any callbacks like into the pod lifecycle? Um, not sure. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, of course, there are you know some hooks now you can have in the pod uh, to handle with like either some events like eviction or a shutdown. So I'm not sure if um, you know. So I know like from kubectl you can do force and you could say um, you know the grace period is zero, so that will force the evict right away. Away, uh, but I'd have to check and see what exactly the behavior would be uh, during the auto scaling component. Awesome. I think that's all uh, for the questions. Uh, Jim, Deep, thank you. And uh, I think that's probably going to end this live stream. Uh, again, folks, if you have any questions, the contact information for Deep and Jim was posted uh, as part of the presentation. So please feel free to reach out. And we will continue to host meetups. If you, uh, you know, please also send us suggestions for other topics that you'd be interested in. You can post a comment or, again, uh, email in the meetup group. Uh, and would definitely love to cover some of those topics in our upcoming meetups. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye.